Okay, so this is a new venture, new process, uh, 273F transfer case. It's out of a 2010, I believe, F550, if I can remember right. It's been laying around for a little while. We're going to disassemble it today. That nut is an inch and a half. Um, we're going to split the case and take it all apart. This yoke, you can try and tap it off if you want. I'm not going to. Um, since I have the Tiger Tool yoke pulling system, that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to get this set up here. All right, so I got this set up. This is a small yoke puller. It's part of this Tiger Tool drive line kit. It's part number 20478, and it's meant for light duty and medium duty stuff. It's got uh, both the U-joint pullers. It's got those pliers that uh, Tiger Tool just sent us that we gave away. You guys can't really see that. Turn it down a little bit, you can see this kit. It's really a nice kit. So it's got the snap ring pliers here, the straight and the 75 degree, and it's got the medium U-joint puller and the, the small U-joint puller as well as the U-joint installer. This, this C-clamp here deal is you can push U-joints in and out. Of course, I've got these pieces out of it for pulling that yoke. Um, Tiger tools that make great stuff. Anything that saves time and doesn't break the bank is good stuff. Um, now I'm gonna put some light oil on this forcing screw before I go ahead and run it in there. Okay, so this forcing screw is meant to be designed to be run with a uh, an impact, or you can, I should say that's how their instructions show it. take out all these bolts all the way around. This transfer case is going to come apart this way first. This will come off. we got some snap rings and then we can split the case. Okay. Now they make a tool if you could put in here and spread this apart, it's a shame I didn't get that on video. It really is. This was on here, and uh, I didn't want to beat on it, so where the heck my tool fly to? Here it is. I used my uh, OTC caliper um, piston return tool. And I just spaced this out here, and I was putting some tension on it to spread between these two ears, and I was going to hit the record button, and it just popped off. Sorry I missed that. Anyways, so now that's off. Now, these things are oil-driven. Oil um, this right here is actually a pump. This pump, like if this was sitting in the... In the vehicle, this would be up higher, this would be down low, this is the lowest point. So you see this, this cast part of the aluminum case, this comes down here to where the pickup is, which is where the drain would be. So we're going to, uh, before we go too much farther, that's what I got the drain pan here for. I'm going to pull this out and let it drain. 
I expect this to be a challenge because it's pretty rusty. I don't know if you can see that, but I'll see if I can get it loose and get it drained. It won't come out. It is uh, so badly rusted that when I put a Allen wrench in there, it just it just spins. So we're just going to move forward here. All right, this pump has to come out of this little tube here. So when you pull this out. have to get it out of there at the same time. It can be a little bit of a pickle. All right, so that's our pump. Now, if you're gonna go back together with this, you have to make sure when you put this down in there, you get it back on that tube. I don't know if the light is working for you or not. You can see that. You know, I have to zoom in, but uh, it's just a pretty, simple gear pump, you know, not really, you can see that gear down inside there or not. All right, now there's a snap ring right in here, which is not real difficult. That's what I have this screwdriver for here. You can get right up underneath it, and you can pull this with a screwdriver, and it's just a band. See what that is there. Okay, now there's a snap ring right here as well. So the first snap ring was the outside of the bearing. Now this one is down here. Let's see if I can just turn it. It's right on top now. That's where a set of these snap ring pliers come in handy. Because they allow you to get closer to the shaft without this one it'd really be nice to have a bigger set right now because mine aren't opening wide enough so I'm just going to take one handle over top of the other That's what it is. Now I'm gonna take all of these 10 millimeters out all the way around. And I'm gonna start at the bottom so that if by chance it would start leaking, it can drain before I get it separated. Every tool has a hammer side. These are, in, these are in such bad shape. I mean, there's just nothing left of the heads. I don't really care, it's not going back together. You got one, two, three, four of them. It won't come out. Okay, let me get something else to get on them. They all came out except for one down here. So uh, I took a carbide tool and just worked the top of it off. And I think we're just about separated right now. See, just a little bit of silicone in there. 
is all it was. Wow, look at, look at how warm that is. Okay, all right. So next we'll go ahead and take this chain off. There's a snap ring right in here. And that snap ring will let this gear come forward. And uh, I might be able to snap, yeah, I can snap ring that one too. Perhaps they do. Oh, is it nice to have the right one? Okay, so that's the other snap ring. Now this gear and this gear will come off. Just like so. And that's that. So now, you can see we're in two-wheel drive. This is where the gear was that we just took off with the chain. So that gear would have been here, and it would have come down here to this gear with the chain and driven the front drive shaft in the back, because this is where the input comes in from the transmission, right here on the other side. Um, this is the output here. So it comes in from the transmission here. This shift fork, there's two shift forks in here. This shift fork simply takes this shaft and ties it together with this outer shaft that spins freely right now. You can see it moves freely. So right now we're in two-wheel drive. So the engine can turn and this gear could stay still and not move. So in the when you're ready to put it in four-wheel drive, you, there's a demand. If it's electric, it'll be electric shift. If it's not, then you know obviously you do it by lever. But um, when there's a, a call for four-wheel drive, this collar is going to move. When this collar moves, it locks this outer gear onto the main shaft. That's what this. This is one shaft coming in from here up to. We'll talk about the. Uh, uh, the planetary is up here in just a second. So that fork right there takes this collar right here that you see with these teeth and all it's doing is locking it to the teeth you see behind there. I don't know if you can see down in here there's another gear on here which is tied to this fast. It, it moves with it as you can see in here watch in there you can see that's moving okay so what we're doing when we put it in full drive we grab that shift leather or you turn the switch whichever it is is you're just actuating this collar which I did very ungracefully so now once that's locked you have teeth in this collar that are half on the other gear and half on this collar gear and that makes it go into full wheel drive. So now they're locked together. All right, so we're gonna take that out. Say, all right, so you wanna go back into two wheel drive. You pull it, and now we're back to two wheel drive. So now we understand that, we're gonna pull this out. This is the first shifter. You get a look at the teeth in there, you can see how they work. Okay, now this is the, the shaft here. It goes into what's called a planetary drive, which I'm going to pull this out of here. Alright, so there's a look at the shaft. This is that collar right here we were just looking at that's able to free, spin freely when we want it to and lock in. And then inside here, there's a second shift fork, which is right here. This shift fork locks either lets the input shaft spin freely with the engine torque or a reduced torque by a matter of shifting just shifting the teeth inside so when this when this is in so far it grabs on one set of teeth there's two sets there's one here and one here can you see that maybe all right so there's two sets there's one inner one outer so this is how you get your high and low in your transfer case 
once you're in full wheel drive then that shifter can go a little bit farther and it will lock go from from locking just the one gear to the main shaft in one position I'm just going to put this back in so you can kind of see what we're talking about okay so if you notice there the planetaries are moving you can see them we're moving the one two three four five six little gears that are there's one big gear around here which is called the sun gear i believe it's called the sun these are the planet planets i guess planets going around the sun and then there's a gear in the center so this gear in the center is not only have teeth inside but it has teeth outside and these little rollers i don't know if you can see in there Yeah, I can see a little better. You see these rollers in here. Them rollers are going, running around this gear out here called the sun gear. Take one screwdriver, we're going to twist and get, and get this started. We'll take a second screwdriver and get underneath it. And then we can start pulling it out this way. Okay. And once we get going around here, we should be able to should be able to just pull it out the rest of the way, just little by little. Just watch that spring, because sometimes it'll come flying out at you. And that was it, if you didn't see it. All right, we got a snap ring down in there. I gotta get on. in there is the inside roller bearing or ball bearing not a roller okay so let's see if you can see this yeah so here's the helical cut sun gear and this is the planetary so you can see the planetaries run on the inside of this so the this is the input shaft from the transmission so it, it the power from the engine comes in and then it turns this it turns the inside can you see the inside of that turning and depending on which way this gear is put in here if it's here then well, I guess it should back up. There's two sets of teeth, like I explained earlier. The power from the engine comes in here. We have that shaft that I showed you earlier comes in here. That shaft will lock into either one of these, depending on where this is locked. This is from the transmission. This is the input. So this would slide on the back of the transmission. And depending on where that collar is locked dictates whether you're in four high or four low. If we're in all the way, we're direct. If we come out to here, we're on the planetaries. Yeah, there you go. And then that's all achieved by basically changing how that shaft is tied in right here. That's our four high and four low. All right, so we need to get this seal or this uh, snap ring out of here there we go I'm just gonna hold my screwdriver on there so it doesn't fly out at me there we go Put that one out and we need to do this one up here as well at least this one's a little easier to get to Okay, so now this this bearing will drive out. Tell you what, I'm gonna take I'm gonna go ahead and take this loose. I'll go ahead and take this yoke off now, and uh, we'll go ahead and press that out. 
inch in length. Alright, I got the Tiger Tool yoke, uh, yoke puller on here. Got it all set up. Tight. Doesn't take very much. Okay, the next one off. Alright, now we should be able to tap this one right out now. Okay, so that's the output to the front axle and you see there's a snap ring right there. So if we we're going to replace that bearing, we just take that off and then that would slide off. And that has got all the disassembly. If you were going to rebuild it, then you know now would be the point where you'd go back together. So I hope, well, we could not get seal out. We could not get bearing out. That bearing, you probably have to destroy this bearing to get it out because I'm looking at the back side and there's no way to get into that. Um, it just gets you to the inside race but not the outside. So I imagine that would be ruined in order to get it out. But there you go. She's all tore down. You said if you were going to rebuild it, then you know you would just get your parts, get it all uh, get it all cleaned up and start going back together. It's actually a very simple simple transfer case to work on. Uh, it looks like a wreck here because I just threw things around to get it apart real quick to show you. Um, most of rebuild kits are going to come with replacement nylons for the shift forks, wear pads, whatever you want to call them. Um, like this one here. Oops, these are actually in good shape. They're not bad at all. So, But anyways, I took this apart for another reason. Um, and I just thought I'd bring you along while I was doing it. So, you know, my, my thought it might be interesting. So I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, Give us a thumbs up. We appreciate it. And uh, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Leave your comments down below, and we'll catch you on the next one.